Hi, I'm Chef Frank, this is Proto Cooks, and today we're making bumbuelos de bacalao, or salt-cut fritters in English. What are bumbuelos de bacalao? They're salt-cut fritters. It's nothing more complicated than that. Uh, this is something that I grew up with. I grew up with eating bacala, which is the Italian version of bacalao. Uh, bacalao is Spanish, Italian is bacala. We ate it in salads, we cooked it in tomato sauce, we ate it so many different ways. And this is a recipe that I developed working in restaurants. Uh, and I've had many similar things from our travels in Spain. They love bacala in Spain. Uh, so what is bacala? Salt cod. They take the cod, they salt it. Uh, so it's good to store at room temperature. It doesn't go bad. They eat it all over, the, uh, all over Spain and Europe and the Mediterranean. Uh, they eat it in the Caribbean as well. Um, and the Italian-Americans in, uh, in America love it, okay? Uh, and a bumuelo just means fritter. So we're doing salt cod fritters, and they're absolutely delicious. Here's what we have as far as ingredients for our uh, bumuelos de bacalao. Uh, about two pounds of salt cod that's been soaked overnight, change the water two or three times uh, just to get some of that salt out. Uh, two scallions chopped, about a half a bunch of parsley, tablespoon of baking powder, two eggs, two small cloves of garlic, uh, teaspoon of chili flakes, and about two cups of all-purpose flour. Um, this is kind of one of those things you have to get a little feel for. If I need a little more flour, I need a more liquid, I'll add it a little later and I'll just, I'm looking for a, a finished texture, a consistency. Um, the chili flakes aren't really here for heat. They just bring a little flavor to the background. And I'll show you how I'm gonna deal with the garlic and the parsley in a minute. So that's what we have. Let's put this together. So let's mix this up. I'm gonna get some of this stuff out of my way and I'll bring it back on the board when it's time to use it. Okay, I'm gonna show you how I want the garlic cut and the parsley cut right now. Uh, I'm gonna put the cod over here. Okay, I always wear gloves when I'm cutting garlic and parsley. Uh, not parsley, garlic and uh, cod. Uh, I don't like the way it makes my hands smell. I'm sorry, I always wear gloves. I buy these at my local restaurant supply store. With garlic, I'm not too choosy of how I do this, right? Get the side of my knife, give it a smash, smash it, and then I'm just gonna chop it nice and fine. Okay, I don't want the garlic in this recipe to be overpowering. I want just a little flavor of garlic. So I'm gonna take this garlic, I'm gonna put it in with my chopped cod, okay? With the parsley, I love parsley. A lot of times people use parsley as a garnish and it's just something green on the plate, but the flavor of Italian parsley or flat leaf parsley is delicious. Uh, I use some of the stems. As long as the stems are fine and not big and chunky and woody, I use them. And what I do is I take this and I bundle it up into a nice kind of little bundle, and then I run my knife through it. Okay, once I give it a quick turn, I run my knife through it again, and that's pretty much it. A lot of people over chop their herbs. Parsley has such a great kind of like bright flavor, and if you chop it too much, uh, and just like we're taught in culinary school, if you chop it a lot, uh, sometimes in culinary school they make you chop it too much and you lose some of that smell and that, that aroma and flavor. It's a bright flavor and it's something that should be used as an ingredient, not just as a garnish. Next I'm gonna cut my salt cod, okay? Uh, and my salt cod has been soaking, like I said, it's soaked for about, um, overnight, for about, uh, probably 12 hours, uh, and it rehydrates. It starts out very firm and salty. There's actually a crust of salt on it. I'm not gonna throw away my liquid because I might need that liquid later uh, if this is too dry. And all I'm really gonna do with this is cut it into strips. It has kind of a, um, I guess for lack of a better term, a little funky smell. You might be like, oh my gosh, that's a little weird. Yes, it's a stronger flavored food. I think it's absolutely delicious. Um, and maybe it takes some getting used to, but I think it's absolutely delicious and something that if you've never tried, you should try. Uh, so I'm just gonna dice this up like I did with the other stuff. Okay, dice it, make it into sticks and then really chop it nice. If you want to throw some of this into like a food processor, you can. But for the most part, I just want chunks of this in my, in my batter that I'm gonna fry. Okay, chop, chop, chop. Cool. So my, my garlic's in here. All my salt cod's in here. Now let's mix it up. 
Uh, I'm gonna add my baking powder, my chili flakes, I'm gonna add my scallions and my parsley. And this is, this is the easy part of this whole thing, is it's not really that difficult. Some black pepper. And even though our cod is salty, I'm still gonna add about a pinch of salt because that's what you do. I'm gonna mix this up. Give it a good stir while it's dry. I'm gonna crack my eggs in there. Okay. I'm gonna add just a little bit of my soaking liquid in there too, because I want this to be a certain texture. It should be like a very thick pancake batter. A little more of my soaking liquid. I'm probably gonna end up adding about a half a cup of my soaking liquid. And I'm gonna add my cod and garlic now too. So everything goes into the pool and we'll give it a mix. So it's gonna be a really nice thick batter. You don't want to overmix because if you overmix things get a little sticky and I think we need another little bit of water. You don't want it to get gluey. You want it to be a very nice thick pancake batter. And I think that's good. Uh, basically what I really want to do here is hold together the codfish uh, in fritter form. I don't really want to um, um, have a very flowery or, um, you know, it shouldn't be all dough. It should be mostly cod and a little bit of dough holding it together. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put this in the fridge, let it rest for about a half hour, let everything kind of uh, come together, and then we're going to fry. It's time to fry. My buñuelo batter has chilled and rested. Now we're gonna fry. I have vegetable oil in my pan. It's at about 350. And I'm just gonna get a spoon and drop these in bit by bit. I don't want them to be too big. So they're gonna be a little bit bigger than a quarter uh, around. Uh, but I want them to be, a, a, you know, bite size. You know, so I can bit a, put a, like a, a big stack of them on a plate and you can pick them like hors d'oeuvres. I have a spider. Uh, you can see this in my Zeppeli video. I will link something similar to this in the description. Uh, and I have a plate or a bowl with um, paper towels to soak up excess liquid or oil, liquid, oil, and uh, some salt just in case I need it. So I'm just gonna take little pieces of the dough or the batter, and I'm gonna plop them into my oil. Now, right away you can see what happens once I drop these in is they start to uh, sizzle, right? And basically what that is, is that's oil uh, frying it properly at the right temperature. It's water coming out of our batter and oil not going in. So if you drop these in and there's no movement and no bubbles, that just means that uh, you're going to have an oily product. But we're not going to have an oily product with this because I can see that they're sizzling right away. Okay, I'm going to get a big stack of these in there. Uh, the temperature of your oil will go down a little because the batter is chilled, but uh, don't worry about that. Uh, as long as it's sizzling away like that and bubbling, you're going to be good. Drop it in. It's about a tablespoonful, maybe a little more. And I'm going to watch the color. And what I'm looking for is a nice brown color here. Um, that's how I know it'll be cooked. It's nice and golden brown on the outside. And that's it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this in batches, put this aside, come over here, let these cook. Okay, get my spider, move them around, make sure they're not sticking together. You can see that some are getting brown already, and that's what I want. They've started to float, that's a good thing too. Um, that means they're not sticking to the bottom. And all I'm gonna do is get in there and turn them and make sure they're getting golden brown on all sides. This might take a minute or two, and that's okay. The baking powder in this recipe is going to give them a little bit of lightness. The dough or the batter is fairly heavy, so uh, putting baking powder in here, when it gets hot, it'll start to react and uh, give these a little lightness. So they'll probably take about five minutes to cook, um, and that's okay. You can still see that they're bubbling away, and that's a good thing. I'll give them a little turn, make sure they're getting cooked on both sides. 
These look ready. I'm going to take them out, shake off excess oil, put them onto your paper towels. They're lightly and lightly golden brown, crispy on the outside. Oh, I made a mess. Of course I made a mess. Okay. Take off all the excess oil, give them a stack. Uh, I'm going to just hit it with a little bit of seasoning. Get a couple of lemon wedges on top. And that's our Buñuelos de Bacalao. Let's give them a taste. Nice and crispy on the outside, nice and soft on the inside. You can see there's nice large chunks of salt cod and just a little bit of the batter holding it together. Mm. Mm. So delicious. It brings me back to Spain. It brings me back to my childhood. Oh, I just love it. It might not be for everyone, but I think it's one of the most delicious things in the world. Buenos de Bacalao. Anytime you get your hand on salt cod, give it a try, uh, give it a chance. It's absolutely delicious. I hope you enjoy the Buenos de Bacalao. Uh, I love them. I think they're tasty and delicious. Um, give us a like, subscribe, send us your comments. I love hearing people's comments and stories. Um, Definitely, definitely tell your friends about us. Uh, we're starting to make some headway. People are enjoying our videos and it makes me extremely happy. I hope you enjoyed this. I'm Chef Frank. This is Proto Cooks. Enjoy your buñuelos.